it's earlier than usual. We're off on a special journey today. Today, we're gonna trim some buffalo and we're gonna travel through the epic Scottish landscape to get there. So like I said, we are just about to set off on an epic journey. I say epic, it's about a four hour drive from our house. Normally we don't travel that far to trim cow's feet, but we thought we'd make an exception to trim these beautiful buffalo. So let's get in the car, get a McDonald's breakfast and get there. We live in the most incredibly beautiful part of Scotland. It is absolutely gorgeous where we live. And this is the A75, the trunk road that runs right through the middle of it where you can often find my trusty ranger towing the KVK. You can find loads of beautiful castles just like this right by the side of the road. McDonald's is like 70 miles from my house. This is a treat, although it doesn't really look like it. Back to the landscapes. Sorry about the quick pit stop folks, but needs must. These are the beautiful scenes that meet you at the top of Dumfries and Galloway in South Lanarkshire. Apart from the odd sheep, empty tarmac and windmill here and there, there isn't all that much out there. And it is beautiful. Okay, so a bit of an update. The McDonald's was fantastic. The landscape was awesome, as you've just seen. What's not so good is that my dashboard looks like a Christmas tree. Please visit your dealer for service. That's right, the Ranger has broken down. <laughs> Stevie Mitchell um, might not be getting a visit from us. At least we've got these guys on the case. Although, it doesn't seem simple. Hmm. Got a hammer, we can hit something. <laughs> we'll resume this whenever we resume this. And just like that, we're back on our way. Nothing has changed. Apart from, I'm wearing different clothes, we're in a different pickup, we've got a different crush, and there's no Kevin. We are now just about to cross this stunning fourth road bridge. This is a new bridge, and it is absolutely stunning. It also sits next to the old fourth road bridge, and next to it, the hugely iconic fourth railway bridge. Look at these bridges, they are absolutely stunning. Just like the rest of this drive has been. Anyway, we're only about 20 minutes drive away from the Buffalo Farm. So, we'll see you there. Just like that. I'm losing my voice for some reason. But we are here at the Buffalo Farm. Curlies are stood right next to where we're going to be trimming them, and I can see the problem. They look absolutely awesome. Anyway, let's get set up and get them in the crush so we can get them walking more comfortably. This place is awesome. And the calves <laughs> are seriously cool. Craig is here today, by the way. It's just he's holding the camera. Look. See? Hi, guys. I hate that. When we swapped the pickups out, we also swapped the KVK for the Whopper because we were worried the ropes on the inside of the KVK may get tangled in the buffalo's horns. It's still seriously cool, isn't it? <laughs> so we're all set up there with the crush and look at these little guys. How cool are they? These calves are only a few weeks old. <laughs> <laughs> Look, awesome. I might be converted. I think I might want buffalo instead of black and white cows. Maybe. Anyway, we're just about to get the cows in, get them trimmed up, and it's going to be a bit of a job because they are some seriously big feet. Now, buffalo naturally have really, really good feet. These are genuinely a break from the norm. Steve has actually only ever had a hoof trimmer in once before because he's only ever needed it once before. So these two cows are definitely the exception to the rule, but they are uncomfortable and they do need trimmed, which is why we're here and we're going to get it done. I'm not going to give you a tour of the farm unless you really, really want it. So let me know in the comments below if you want to see the cheese factory, if you want to see the buffalo farm, if you want to see the calves and how they're milked, let me know in the comments below this video right now and I'll do that video if you want me to. Otherwise, I won't. Come on. When I talked to Stevie on the phone, I asked if the buffalo were difficult to work with. He said they were friendly, but could be unbelievably stubborn. And you folks are just about to get a good demonstration of how stubborn they really can be. And 
just as I think they're headed the right way, sure enough, they double back and head in completely the wrong direction. As they get onto the concrete, we get a proper look at just how long those hind feet are. I'm keen to get these cows in the crush and see what we can do to make them more comfortable. Come on, lass. Craig has substantially more body mass than me, so I recruit him to help me into the crush with this first buffalo. Come on. Come on. Go. This is going well. <laughs> right down. That was easy. Now, believe it or not, buffalo are actually missing a muscle in their back legs, so we need to be really careful with how high we lift them. Although all of the crushes we use are extremely safe and well designed, you still need to be careful. Oh, look at the size of them. Now remember, this really isn't the norm, and Stevie was actually slightly cautious about getting them trimmed because he doesn't get his cow's feet trimmed because they simply don't need it, and he's worried it would upset this cow. And he's probably right to be. If they were my cows and I'd never had them trimmed before, I would be worried. These are the only two out of his whole herd that need some attention. As you're just about to see, overgrowth like this can cause cavities in the conformation of the hoof, which can be fantastic for hiding stones. Look at that. That is actually a big stone, but they're huge feet, so it looks small. At the risk of sounding selfish here, yes, it's fantastic to get that stone out of the cow's hoof, but it's also really important for me to remove it because if your grinder blade hits one of these stones, it literally feels like a bullet hitting in the chest. Not that I've ever had a bullet hit me in the chest. I'm sure you're all entirely bored of me saying this, but when a cow has feet like this, they're not the norm inside. The anatomy has changed and the bones have descended, which is why I have to take so much time and caution as I trim them. I need to constantly feel for how the foot feels and feel the length of each individual digit. It pushes all the lamina apart. In the background, I'm explaining to Stevie, the farmer and owner of these beautiful buffalo, that this cow has had some sort of episode in her life which has led to this corkscrew claw. You can see the base of the hoof I'm trimming right now is actually constructed of wall horn. It has rotated around the bone within the foot. In other words, the hoof horn is growing at the same orientation of the bone inside the foot, which is twisted. And that's why we've got such a huge overgrowth. If this is the first episode of the Hoof GP you guys are watching, then please note this is not how you would normally trim a cow's hoof. I've modified what I'm doing to suit this cow's individual needs. The bone is not the same, the orientation is not the same, the anatomy is not the same, and therefore my trimming is not the same either. Usually I would never dream of trimming around the front of an animal's hoof like I've just done, but in this case, this very special case, it's what's required. These cow's feet are different inside and that's why I'm taking longer to trim them because I need to be very careful and keep feeling my way around them so that I don't make any mistakes. This hoof may have taken longer than usual, but as I look at it right now, it was worth the effort. A 
Again, the order of the day is softly, softly, gently, gently, even although she doesn't really seem like she wants to play ball. This hoof is just as big as the last one, but it is not as big as the next buffalo due into this crush. Little by little, we are getting this buffalo's feet back to normal. Not that she's probably got any idea of what it is we're actually doing, but when we let her out of the crush, she's going to know exactly what's been happening. And hopefully, she'll be dancing our way all the way back to the field. If you put all these inside, you start to get problems. There's no, no doubt about it, yeah. They don't seem to like, you know, I've watched a lot of your videos and stuff, and. You know, he's picking up stones or going lame. You rarely see a buffalo. Eat. Well, these guys aren't lame with it, even. You know, even though they're. That's because of the extra fat content that's in their foot. It's like they've got like triple insoles. Right. You know, if you took the insoles out of those shoes, yeah, even though they're good shoes, they'd be uncomfortable, wouldn't you? Part and parcel of my job as a hoof trimmer is to educate the people looking after these cows as to why they have their problems and what they could do to better look after their animals. So I'm constantly talking to people just like Stevie as to what is going on with the cows they see before them and what else they could be doing to improve their environment. One buffalo down, one very dear one to go. Keep going, that's it. Keep going. Don't stop. Keep going. As we put this old girl into the crush, I notice something strange happening with her eye, and wrongly assume that she's blind in it. She's got like a blue eye or something, a white eye. Silage eye, is it? No, it's not. It's pigment. She's yeah. not blind? No, 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 no. That's a fully functional eye. Wow. Yeah, it's quite a... Oh, it's like lacking pigment. It's lacking it? pigment or something, but it's quite common. Now, she may not have anything wrong with her eyesight, but she has definitely got some hugely overgrown feet which will be causing her a huge problem. Hold your hand up, look at the size of your hand, and then think about just how huge these feet truly are. It's gonna make a difference, isn't it? <laughs> just like with the last cow, the natural shedding of hoof horn has created all of these voids and cavities, and they're full of little scraps of gravel, all adding to the discomfort of this cow. Now, as I complete this trim, watch just how much movement there is in the claws. Every time I stroke the grinder against the sole of her foot, her claws are pinging back and forth. That's nothing to do with the grinder, nothing to do with the crush, and nothing to do with what I'm doing. It's because of the lever effect. These feet are hugely overgrown, as we've already established, and because of that, with every little movement I make, it's amplified because of the length of these hooves. So take a second and try to appreciate just how difficult it can be trimming a moving object. And again, just like with the last foot, we need to constantly check our work. Because of the movement in the claws, you can see the grinder biting in from time to time. And that can be very disturbing. It can be worrying. But when you're used to trimming claws just like this, you get completely used to it. You really need to keep a tight hand on the grinder at all times. Because if you don't, it can end badly for both you and for the cow. Thing that's different. Is it ever smooth tongue rather than a rough tongue? What do they? It's 
I was genuinely surprised by that fact. You learn something new every day. Folks, we've seen three fairly long and overgrown hoofs, but we've saved the best for last, or rather the worst for last, depending on what way you look at it. The fourth and final foot that we're just about to trim is colossal. Oh. Look, look here, Steve. Look, this is. See these lines? Yeah. Can you see the. Wee, there's loads of little lines. That's where the laminae that I was talking about. That's why her, her feet are like this. See, it's the same there. Yeah. So they've been stretched. You shouldn't be able to see them. If you put a microscope on it, you would normally see it. Yeah, yeah. But you shouldn't be able to see it like that. That's the attachment that's been completely stretched beyond all its capabilities. And that's why her feet are like this. The underworn are not overgrown, if that makes sense. They're just spreading out that much. Yeah. Becoming uncomfortable. Then she walks on her heels. Yeah. See how short her heels are? Yeah, yeah. So that they should take be all yeah. the way. Yeah. So they take all the way and these don't wear. I hope that makes some sense to at least some of you. And if it doesn't, I'm about to do a demonstration once we've finished with this cow, outside with Stevie. It's a little impromptu, I will warn you. This trim definitely looks a little rough and ready compared to the usual trims we do, but we are so far away from the corium, I'm able to push on a little harder at this stage in the trim. As we get closer to the quick, or the corium as it's now known, you'll notice we slow right down. We measure constantly and we are constantly feeling our way around this cow's foot to make sure we do the best job possible. Although she doesn't seem to want us to help right now. Normally, I would pull her foot up much tighter than that and she wouldn't really move at all. You feel like safe that? <laughs> Don't hurt. No, I, no, I, I'm not bothered about me getting kicked. I'm more bothered about I oh, don't want to lift it too far in case it hurts. Sorry. When you work with cows or livestock like this, it's weird. Obviously, you care about your own safety, but your priority becomes the cow. If anything were to happen to any of these cattle that are in my care while they're in the crush, while I'm supposed to be helping them, I would be absolutely devastated. So when she starts to kick or anything like that, my immediate concern is her safety. Now that I know she's getting stressed and anxious about being in the crush for a long period of time, hopefully you'll notice that my actions have sped up somewhat. That's because I'm desperate to do a good job, but also to get her out of the crush so that she calms down and feels more comfortable and is way less likely to hurt herself. You have to remember, these animals are incredibly strong. One kick in the wrong direction and they can break a bone, cut themselves or sever a tendon. If our climate was any drier than it is, it would have just fallen away. So With that being said though, we still need to do the best job we can. So out comes the knife for the finer details. They wait until that disappears and then they stop. They don't do any of this, they don't do any of this, they just keep going until that white stuff disappears and then uh, that's them done. I think the best news for me is that it's not, you think it's more environmental than... Uh, oh yeah. Stevie was really concerned that this cow's problems may have been hereditary. She may have passed it on to her sons and daughters but it's almost a certainty that that's not the case. This is probably the result of the environment that she was in or some kind of problematic period she went through in her life as a youngster. Anyway, we are just about finished this trim, so we'll soon see just how well she walks. Just one quick final check as her foot is on the ground and away she goes. Look at that. I'm quite chuffed with them actually, they came up well. You think? Comfortable? So she was walking on her heels. If you try to walk on your heel right now, yeah. you put your side forward, didn't you see that? Your legs are at the wrong angle. It's the angle that's really important because they learn to start walking like this. What a difference. She will feel a little strange on them for the first couple of hours though. Wouldn't you? Come on, here you go. Like I said earlier, I'm going to film some footage here of the whole setup. I'm going to talk to Stevie. If you do want to see that video, then leave a comment below. Otherwise, I won't bother posting it because I really don't want to bore you. This has been the Hoof GP from the Buffalo Farm. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully, you enjoyed the video as much as those girls enjoyed the trim. Catch you later. Bye.